Welcome. On this video, we will talk about how to solve absolute value functions and absolute value inequalities. So let's get started. So the first question that we want to answer is, how do we solve absolute value functions? And we're going to start by taking a look at this example. We want to solve the absolute value function. 8 equals the absolute value of 2 minus 6. But before we go through the procedure, I do want to refresh one characteristic about absolute values. And that is that recall that the absolute value of negative 8, it is 8, and the absolute value of positive 8 equals 8. And this is just a small example for you to refresh that the absolute value, it's always a positive expression. So the absolute value of negative 8, it is 8, and the absolute value of 8, it is 8. Another example is the absolute value of negative 9, it is equals to positive 9. And the absolute value of 9, it is equals to 9. Well, the same idea can be expressed about expressions. So the absolute value of negative x is just positive x. And the absolute value of x equals x. Recall that when we're using the absolute value, the output is always positive. Just like we're just showing you here. And in addition to that, there are two possible expressions that we could place inside the absolute value to give us the same result. So if we want our output to be 8, we could have put negative 8 or 8. It will still give the same result. So that's the same idea that we're going to be using here to solve absolute values. Because I want to find out an expression for x that if I plug it in, it gets me an output of positive 8. But I know that there are two possible ways. Either the inside is equal to negative 8 or either the inside is equal to positive 8. And that's exactly the idea that we're going to be using. So if we want to solve absolute value equations, what we want to do is once that your expression is isolated, then we're going to let the inside be equal to positive 8 and also the inside to be equal to negative 8. And why is this true? Because if I let the inside be equals to 8, then the output is positive 8. And that's exactly what we have here. And also, if I let the inside be equals to negative 8, my output, it is still 8. So I have to take in consideration those two scenarios. And once we have this, then we just solve them individually. So let's solve the left-hand side. So to solve the left-hand side, we would have to add 6. So now we have 2x equals 14 divided by 2. Then we got 7. So I know that one solution for this absolute value, it's 7. Now let's solve the other one. So plus 6. And now that's going to give me what? Negative 2 divided by 2. So x equals negative 1. So for this absolute value function, we got two solutions. And that is when x is 7 and when x is negative 1. Since we do have time, let's just verify that this is true, since we do have some space. So let's verify. So what happens when my x was equivalent to 7? So if my x is equivalent to 7, what we're going to end up with is just 8 equals 2. And again, I'm just substituting this 7 for x. We just want to verify that this is true. So that's negative 6. So now that's 8 equals so that's 14 minus 6. So 8 equals absolute value of 8. And the absolute value of 8, it is 8. So this checks out. So we know that, yes, positive 7, it is true. It gave me a true statement. It gave me a true statement. So therefore, it is a solution. So now let's take a look at my second result. Because my second result was when x equals negative 1. So what happens if x equals negative 1? Let's just plug that into the original. So now we got 8 equals 2. Now let's substitute this negative 1 to this x right here. So now we got negative 1 times 6. So now we got 8 equals, that's going to give me negative 2 minus 6. 8 equals the absolute value of negative 8. And notice that the absolute value of negative 8, it is 8. So therefore, 8 equals 8. There are two possible values in this case, 7 and minus 1. 
that gave me the same result. So therefore, there are solutions of this absolute value function. And this is the idea of solving absolute value functions. First, isolate the absolute value, and then let the inside be equals to the positive of what you want to end up with and the negative of what you want to end up with, because there are two possible ways to obtain the same result. Now, for example, B, we want to solve the absolute value. And now notice that it is exactly the same problem. But now the difference is that it is equivalent to negative 8 now. But wait, we don't really have to do much in this example. Because one of the key characteristics is that it doesn't really matter what we plug in to the absolute value. The outcome, it's always positive. But here, we have an absolute value which is equal to a negative value. So it doesn't make any sense. There is no x value that you can plug in in here that will give you an output of a negative value. That's just one of the characteristics of the absolute values. The output is never negative. And here, I want an output to be negative. So in this case, once you have an equation, and if that equation is equivalent to a negative number, then there is no solution. And the reason is because the absolute value is never equal to a negative value. Or I should say the absolute function or expression Here we had an absolute expression, an absolute value expression, and that is equivalent to a negative value. That's a no-no. It's never equal to a negative value. So there is no solution for that. So let's take a look at one, two more examples real quick. Example two states, for the function f of x, let's find the values of x such that f of x is equal to zero. In other words, let's solve this absolute value function. So what we want to do here, we want to take a look at f of x, and we want to set it equal to zero. So let's do that. So now our expression, our equation is gonna be zero equals the absolute value of four X plus one minus seven. And if we want to solve the absolute value function, let's isolate it. Therefore, we need to get rid of this negative seven. So let's do that. Let's add seven on the left and on the right. Now this cancels out. And now my absolute value function, it's isolated. Notice that the absolute value expression is isolated and it's equal to seven. And just like we just showed in the previous example, once your absolute value is isolated, all we gotta do at this point is get the inside, which in this case is four X plus one, and set it equal to the positive and set it equal to the negative of what your output or what you want your output to be. So let's let the inside be equal to positive seven and let the inside be equal to negative seven. And that's what we have here. And now that we have two equations, all we got to do at this point is just solve for them. So minus one, that way this cancels out. So we got four X equals six divided by four. So X equals six over four. We got one solution there. So let's solve the right hand side, minus one, minus one. So now we have four X equals negative eight divided by four. So now we got uh, what's this? It goes equals negative two. So therefore my solutions are when x equals six over four and also when x equals negative two. And we're not gonna verify this. You can verify it on your own, but this is the idea. If you have an absolute value function, if you want the zeros, set it equal to zero, isolate the absolute value, and once it's isolated, let the inside be positive and let the inside be negative. That's how we arrive to these two equations and then solve them individually. Now, if we take a look at B now, it says for the function, notice that we have the same function, but now instead of a negative, we have a positive. Same idea. Let's find the values of X where the F of X is equal to zero. So let's, here we have F of X. Let's set it equal to zero. And if we set it equal to zero, we have the following plus seven. 
And if we want to continue solving for this equation, what we've got to do now is just solve the absolute value. So therefore I need to get rid of the seven. So minus seven, minus seven, that gets canceled out. So now we have negative seven equals four X plus one. And now we stop right here because notice that now I have an absolute value, which is equal to a negative value. That's not possible. If your absolute value expression is equal to a negative value, that's not possible. So therefore, there is no solutions for this. So that takes care of solving absolute value equations. So now let's move on to how do we solve absolute value inequalities? And the process of solving absolute value inequalities, it might not be as straightforward as it is for functions, but let's just discuss it. So what we want to do here is we want to find values of x's such that the expression of the absolute value x minus five is less than four. So the way that we solve absolute value inequalities, well, first treat it as an equation. So let's think about what would happen if I were to just think about this problem as if it was the absolute value of x minus five equals to four. So let's treat it as if it was a function. Let's see where is my function equivalent to positive four. And we want it to be positive four because that's the value that we're interested on. And we know how to solve this. We claim that I can let the inside be equals to positive, And I can also let the inside be equals to the negative. And if we add five, in this case, we have the one solution for the equation is positive nine. And one solution to the other equation, it is positive one. So now that we know where exactly is the absolute value equals to four, we can jump to our second step, where the second step, we're going to create intervals using what we got from example one or from step number one. And I'm going to just indicate this as one as being the results of this. So we want to create some kind of a number line and we want to create intervals. So let's place them here. So if this is one, the nine should be over here. And notice that we have done here is we have created three intervals. We have the left, the middle and the right. Once that we have created those intervals, then we can move on to step number three where step number three is very crucial because st step number three, we're going to test the intervals. Uh, and we're going to do that by choosing points. So what do we mean by this? Well, let me choose a different color here. So let me choose green for this one. I want to choose a point that is in this interval on the interval on the left hand side. Let me call that point P1. And if I want P1 to be in this interval on the left hand side, uh, thinking about this being a number line, then perhaps P1, P1 is on the left hand side of one. So one value that is on the left hand side of one, it's zero. So let me just choose X. Also, let me call P1 is when X equals zero. All we're doing is we're just choosing a value on this interval, which is on the left hand side of one, definitely zero. It's on the left hand side of one. And I want to see if this value will give me a true or false statement. So what do we mean by that? Well, the original inequality was the absolute value of X minus five less than four. So if I get this value of X equals zero and I plug it in to my original inequality, is it going to give me a true statement? Well, let's see if you plug that in. Oops. If we plug that in, we're going to have so originally is X minus five less than four. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, X minus five is less than four. So this is the original. So now let's substitute this X with zero. So let's just do that real quick here. So let's just erase it and let's substitute it with zero. So now we're going to get zero. And now let's see, is this going to give me a true statement? Well, this is going to give me zero minus five. So that's negative five. 
less than four. But notice that the absolute value of negative five, it is positive five. So now I have that five is less than four. And this is definitely false. It's definitely false. Five is not less than four. So I know that any point that I would have chosen in this interval, it will give me a false statement. So let me just write that in here. So we're going to call this a false interval. And I'm going to do the same for the other true intervals. So let's choose, let's test the second interval and let's do that in orange. So here, let me call this P2. So under P2, what value will be between one and nine? Uh, I'm just going to choose five, I'll say. So, and again, you can choose any value between one, one and nine. I'm just going to choose five. So for P2, so for P2, I'm just going to choose X equals five. And I want to see, does that give me a true statement or not? Well, let's see. We're going to have, uh, again, originally we had X minus five is less than four. We're testing five. So let's just erase this X and let's substitute it with five. So now we got a substitution of five. So we have the absolute value of zero is less than four, but the absolute value of zero is zero. So we have the expression that zero is less than four. And this is definitely true. So now we know that any value that I would have chosen in this second interval, it will give me a true statement. So let's just write this down. True. And now let's just test the third interval. Let's just choose any value, which let me just call it P3 right here. And for P3, I'm just going to choose, uh, I guess, 10. Choose any value that is greater than 10, 9. So 10 is one of them. And let's just test it. Let's just test that. So now we're going to have, um, oops, what do we have? So 10, sorry, there's a bunch of numbers. I'm sorry, colors that need to be changed here. So minus five, less than four. And this is going to give me five. Four, and the absolute value of five, it is just five. And it's five less than four. That's definitely false. So definitely in this interval, this is a false interval. Now, where exactly is my solution? Well, again, we're going to find the solution now. And the solution are going to be those intervals that we have a true statement. So therefore, if I'm looking at this example, the only interval where I end up with the true statement was between one and nine. So therefore my solution is just that interval. Then my solution is just from one to nine. But now we gotta be careful here because now we gotta determine what kind of parentheses do we have here? Do we have a curvature or do we have a bracket? Well, it all depends on how my inequality was stated. So here we have the absolute value of X minus five less than four. So notice that we're not including four, but the values of one and nine give me a result of four. So therefore I just need to exclude the values of one and nine. So I don't need to include one and nine. So therefore I'm not using a bracket. I'm just using a parenthesis here. Again, let's just notice that this takes a little bit longer than if it was just a, an equation. So first, we took a look at the inequality, and we saw that it was less than 4. So my first step, I just treated it like an equation. So I set it equal to 4. I found those values. Once we have that, I created an interval using those values, and then I test those intervals. And those intervals that end up with the true statements are the intervals that I'll be using for my solution. And with this,
It concludes our lesson for absolute value functions and inequalities.